Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, count of matches in a tournament. So we're given a single integer n, which represents the number of teams in a tournament. Now they say the rules are strange, but they seem pretty intuitive for me. So you can think of it like a bracket where a pair of teams are going to play each other and then the winner is going to advance to the next round. And this is another pair. It could be possible that we actually have an odd number of teams, in which case one of the teams doesn't get matched with another. Well, in that case, you can kind of think of it like this, where, well, the bracket will continue. These two teams will play each other. The winner will be here. And then the winner of these two will be here. And then they'll play each other. Then the winner will advance. Eventually, this team, the odd team, will end up playing somebody. So we're going to keep going until we have one team left. And then among these two, we'll have a winner and then we're done. So the only question here is that we are trying to answer how many total matches were played or how many total games were played before we ended up with a single team remaining. Well, in this example, we have five teams starting. So you can say n is initially equal to five. Well, let's just count. We have here one match played, a second match played. So that's the first round. In the second round, we had just one match played. And then lastly, we had one more match played. So I think in total, that was four. So how can we go about solving this problem? How can we determine the number of matches until we have a single team remaining? The easiest way is probably just based on simulation, kind of what we did here. But you tell me, what are the rules of this simulation? Well, it's probably easiest to go round by round. But how many games or matches are played in each round? Well, initially, we have five teams. So how many matches are going to be played among those five teams? Well, basically, it's based on the pairs that we can form. So we would take five and divide it by two and round down integer division we would end up with two as the value. So two matches can be played when we have five teams. How many teams are gonna be remaining after the first round? In our case, it is three teams. What's the rule for that though? Well, if we had an even number of teams, we would just take four and like divide it by two. But if we have an odd number of teams, how do we know how many teams are gonna be remaining? If we take five and divide it by two, of course we get 2.5. Do we wanna round this up or round it down? We probably wanna round it up because we can't eliminate half of the teams. We can only eliminate less than half, only two teams. So we round up to get the remaining number of teams, which is going to be three. So we're going to take the ceiling of this. That's the mathematical operation to round a decimal value up. That's pretty much the rules of the simulation. The only question is how many rounds are going to be in this simulation because that tells us how many times we need to loop and that would tell us the big O time complexity of the solution. Well, since we are pretty much cutting this in half every single time, the height of this is going to be log n, log base 2n specifically. So overall time complexity is going to be log n. That's how many times we're going to be looping. No extra space complexity because we don't really need any data structures. So let's code this up. So I'm going to initialize our result, which is the number of matches, and that's what we're going to be returning. And the way I'm going to simulate this is just say while n is greater than one, we know we have more than one team remaining. So we know what we want to set n equal to n divided by two and then round that up to get the number of teams remaining. So math.ceiling to get the number of teams remaining. But before we should even uh, do that, we also need to update the result. How many matches were played before we eliminated the teams? How do we get that? Well, that was just n divided by two rounding down. So this is pretty much the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient, but there actually is a more efficient solution to this problem. 
Let's go back to the idea of the bracket. So let's say we had eight teams. Just to keep it simple, this is like a power of two, two to the power of three or eight. And the number of games that we would end up playing here, of course, in the first round, it's going to be four. And then in the next round, it's going to be two. And the last round, it's going to be one. Now, I don't know about you, but this is kind of reminiscent of a binary tree, isn't it? Like having one and then two and then four, et cetera, et cetera. So when you add these up, you end up with seven. That's definitely not a coincidence, is it? This is basically the height of that two to the power of three minus one, which is seven, or in other words, the number of teams that we started with, which is eight minus one left over with a seven. Pretty much any time we have like a power of two, we can just return n minus one. That's how many matches are going to be played. And that makes sense because think about it this way. Doesn't every single team that we start with have to be eliminated. For example, there has to be a game where this team got eliminated, and there has to be a game where this team got eliminated. So let's say this, 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 and this. So there has to be four games for those teams to get eliminated. And maybe this team and this team get eliminated. Two games for that. And maybe one game for this team to get eliminated. Every team is getting eliminated, except for one of them. It doesn't really matter which one remains, does it? But we do know one team will not be eliminated. So if we start with eight teams, there are going to definitely be seven matches because seven teams have to be eliminated and a team can only be eliminated in a single match. And of course, two teams can't be eliminated in one match. So there's going to be seven matches played for us to have one team remaining. So that's the idea that we can extrapolate to actually extend this example now to having this input example where n is actually equal to seven, because this is actually a unique example. We start here with seven teams. So, okay, we have a pair here, a pair here, a pair here. Now we have one team remaining. This team is actually not gonna have to wait until the final round because we'll pair these two together, and now we can actually immediately pair these two together. But it doesn't really matter how the bracket ends up looking. There's going to be a match where this team gets eliminated, a match where this team and this team. Those are these three matches. And then a match where this team gets eliminated and uh, this team gets eliminated. That's these two matches. And then finally, one match where either this or this gets eliminated. Let's just say it's this one and one team remaining. It's not really a proof, of course, but it does kind of tell you the intuition, right? There has to be a match where every team is eliminated except for one. And we know only one team can be eliminated per match. So, of course, the result is always going to be N minus one. That's how many matches need to be played for one team to be remaining. Now, what's the time and space complexity of this? It's pretty efficient, I would say. It's constant time and space. Let's code this up, but I don't think you need to see that. So I guess I'll just get rid of this, uh, right? N uh, minus one, just to prove to you that this does work. I will go ahead and run it. And let's see. So that is definitely efficient, as you would expect. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.